Today on the Nivlac 57 YouTube channel, we're going to review the Max ECU. To start this video off, I just want to remove any doubt of any inherent biases that you may think I have. I've used Mega Squirt, HP Tuners, Speedduino, Holly, and a few other ECUs. This is just my experience. I'm not being paid by Max ECU whatsoever, just like with the engines that we run. Frankly, if Coyotes were a little bit more affordable, we'd be running Coyotes, but GM just makes a better bang for your buck product, so we typically run GM engines. It's not really a uh, tribalism thing to me. If Holly made a better ECU for this particular case, I'd be running a Holly. And we do run Hollies on other cars, and they work well. Now, something you're going to see me doing in this video a lot is I'm going to be comparing the Holly to the Max ECU quite a bit. Holly is one of the most popular ECU options out there, so that's why I'm doing that. For the longest time, I've been looking for an ECU that will allow me to shoot myself in the foot. Obviously, my goal is not to shoot myself in the foot, but I want an ECU that gives me the amount of control and takes the handcuffs off so that I can make the ECU do exactly what I want it to do. Now, for most people, you probably want those handcuffs in place. If you don't have the experience to know exactly what you're doing and what you're changing, you know, having those handcuffs in place can be very helpful and keep you from hurting your stuff. The problem with the handcuffs is a lot of times they keep you from doing what you actually need to do. A good example of this is the Eagle Talon that we built with the front wheel drive 4T80E. We were having extremely harsh shifts on that car. The factory modulates the transmission pressure control solenoid. I wanted to do that with one of Holly's advanced tables, but they wouldn't let you. Which brings us to the Max ECU. The Max ECU is the closest thing I have found to a microcontroller as any ECU that I have ever used. Holly ECUs, for better or for worse, keep you from hurting yourself. They work great for most basic setups. LS, naturally aspirated stuff, Hemi's, basic turbo LS combos, the super basic stuff that everybody runs. What I have found is that it is very common to run into scenarios where the basic controls just don't get the job done. Also, I find with Holly that a lot of times they haven't implemented features that would be really convenient that are available on their other products. Looking at you, Map Base Boost Control. Max ECU is different. All of their models of ECU use the same software. That means that the most advanced features are available across the board and you're not dealing with issues like with a Holly where the Holly Dominator supports closed loop traction control and the Terminator doesn't. One of the things that I really like about the Max ECU is the IO handling. On a Holly, a lot of the I.O. is fixed, meaning you cannot decide what you want that input or output to be. If you're running a six cylinder and you have a eight cylinder box with eight injector outputs, those two extra injector outputs and spark outputs, you can't reassign them to do other functions. Instead, you're stuck with your four ins and your four out. The Max ECU lets you define any pin to do anything you want. Now, there's certain pins that are designed to do certain things. Like I said, it's the closest thing to a microcontroller that I've ever used. All right, so let's go over something that I think is rather cool that you can do with a Max ECU, but not with anything else that I've looked at. So something that you struggle with a lot on aftermarket ECUs is IO. A lot of times you don't have as much as you really want, where you're constantly having to compromise and think about, okay, well, I can have this feature or this feature. 
Well, with the Max ECU, you can use your I.O. much more efficiently, which allows you to make your I.O. go a lot farther. For example, we're going to talk about my Ford Fairmont station wagon. It has a Vortec 4200, has Transbrake Turbo 400. I plan to race this at a drag strip, which means I need the car to be cooled down in between rounds. Now, something I would like to do with this car is be able to walk up to the car, hit a switch, have the cooling fans and the water pump come on and cool the car down to 130 Fahrenheit. On a Holly or some other ECU, this would require its own dedicated input to activate that feature. But on the Max ECU, I can repurpose inputs that aren't really being used when the engine isn't running. For example, the trans brake button. You're only really using it when you're trying to spool the car up on the line. So what I've done on this car is I can literally just walk up to the car, hit the trans brake button, it latches that input in, kicks on my fans, kicks on my water pump, and cools the car down to 130 Fahrenheit. But only when the car's not running. Instead of having to have two separate inputs, one for my trans brake and one for that cool down feature, I have one input and I can latch it for one feature and not latch it for the other feature and everything works. This is why Max ECU is so much better. Like I said before, it's like a microcontroller. I can basically write my own code to make the inputs and outputs do exactly what I want them to do. Additionally, with the I.O., let's say that you wired two cylinders backwards. On a Holly or a Mega Squirt, you have to repin the ECU. On a Max ECU, you can literally just change the assignment in the ECU. This is really useful for cases where like you're using a stepper motor or something like that where you're trying to figure out, you know, which way you have the A and the B solenoid wired and you can just play around with it in the software instead of having to climb under your dash and repin the ECU 45 times. Never been there. That's never happened to me. Nope. Definitely not. Now, something that a lot of people have asked when I've talked about the Max ECU is what about advanced tables? Well, that's something that really makes the Holly very powerful. You have the ability to make these advanced tables to accomplish tasks that maybe they didn't think of, and they're really powerful. Well, Max ECU has their own, uh, they're called user tables, and they can basically perform the same functions as the advanced tables and more. You can essentially change any control in the ECU. What's not great about the Holly advanced tables is they only let you do certain things. That being said, I really haven't had the need for an advanced table on the Max ECU. The Holly, you need an advanced table for everything. You wanna add a safety, you need an advanced table. You wanna add flex fuel, you need an advanced table. These simple things should just be built into the ECU. If you have a flex fuel sensor, turn on the flex fuel. It's not difficult, you know, it, it shouldn't be complicated, but with a Holly, you gotta burn one of your tables. It is what it is. With the Max ECU, there hasn't been a feature yet where I've needed an advanced table. Everything's built in. They've already thought of it. They've already built in a function that does the job exactly the way I need it to. Additionally, they have something called add an access. If there's anything that you don't like the way that it's controlling, you can add an access and make it into a 3D table and make it dependent on whatever you think it should be dependent on. A good example of somewhere where you might need this is on your fuel table with an engine that has VVT. On most ECUs, you just have to deal with the 2D fuel table as it is. Whereas with the Max ECU, you can easily make a fuel table that also has a third dimension, which is VVT position, and make fueling changes only when the VVT is at a certain spot. This makes it super easy to make the changes once and make it consistent so that anytime it goes to that VVT position, 
and that manifold pressure and RPM, it gets the right fueling. One other thing that I really like about the Max ECU is it is clear that it was designed by an engineer. As an engineer, you have to think about what is the worst possible thing that could happen at any given time? You have to think about what if it was wired incorrectly? What if a wire breaks? What if somebody's monkeying around and cuts a wire by accident and you don't realize it? This is particularly important on things like fault contacts. This is important because that fault input basically is telling your system it needs to shut down or bad things will happen. The problem with it's sending a high signal when there's a fault present is what if that wire breaks? The external device may say, hey, there's a fault present, but if that wire is broken, the controller will have no idea and not shut the system down. Therefore, it is a better idea to constantly send a high signal when there is no fault present and then take that signal low when there is a fault present. Therefore, when a wire is cut, that is a fault condition, the system will shut down, and it operates in the safest manner possible. This same logic has been applied to the Max ECU for the traction control enable input. Better said, it is a traction control disable input, meaning you have to apply a signal to the input in order to disable the traction control. That means that if you have a cut wire or something's not hooked up right, the traction control will default to on and when you're dealing with a very expensive race car and you may be relying on the traction control to keep you safe you're good to go the traction control will be on and it will operate in the safest manner possible another feature that is great on the max ecu are the data logs they have a feature in them where you can enter your time slip and it will automatically plot all the incremental times in your data log so you know exactly when you cross that time. This is extremely useful because you can figure out exactly where an issue may have been happening on the track. One such example of when this was useful for us is on this car. The one pass I've made with this six cylinder, it made a 990 pass at 134 and I was a little confused by the slow 60 foot. All of the other incremental times looked to be dead on, performing exactly as they should be, but for some reason, the 60 foot was a little slow. When we reviewed the video, we saw that the car did a little bit of a bunny hop at the 60 foot cone, and it made us think, oh, the front wheels might have been in the air and we didn't trip the 60 foot cone with the front tires. Then I was able to enter my time slip into my data log and I was able to clearly see where the front wheels came off the ground and it coincided exactly with the 60 foot cone. This told me exactly why my 60 foot time was off. This has so many practical uses, it's insane. Everywhere I look, the Max ECU has thought of it. Now, all that being said, one area where the Max ECU is really lacking is digital dashes. Their recommended solution is to use an Android tablet with their M-Dash Android application. Now, I've used Android tablets to try and make digital dashes before with my Megasquirt stuff, and no, just, just no. This is not a digital dash solution. It's so clunky, it takes forever to boot, you're constantly having to think, is the battery gonna die? You're constantly dealing with error messages that pop up on the screen that you just have to hit okay so that the thing will start reading the darn ECU. You can tell I'm a little frustrated by this. I've been through the ringer. At the end of the day, the function of a digital dash is to show you your data as quickly and easily as possible and an Android application on an Android tablet just isn't the way to go. Enter the Tinker Digital Dash. Recently, I discovered them and noticed that they have support for the Max ECU. I contacted them and we struck a deal and I ordered one up and 
problem solved. It supports everything that I need it to. It connects right to the Max ECU, boots up in like three seconds, displays everything I need it to, and it's not gonna break your bank. And so far, it's been treating me really well. Also, I can work with the guy who designed the Tinker Dash, and we can make feature changes and upgrades to it. We are going to explore more advanced CAN features with the Tinker Digital Dash. One thing that I haven't even mentioned with the Max ECU is all of the advanced CAN based functions. The Max ECU is one of the only ECUs on the market which can emulate the BMW CAN network and control a seven speed dual clutch transmission. And something that I want to explore on the Tinker Dash is I want to be able to have CAN switches on my dash, which automatically gets sent over to the ECU and provide me with more inputs. As most people know, CAN is a two-way communication, meaning you can send messages and receive messages. Most digital dashes only take CAN messages one way. Potentially, with the Max ECU, you may be able to send CAN messages from your dash to your ECU. This means that inputs that you have wired directly into your digital dash, you may be able to send to your Max ECU and display in a data log. Or you could have touchscreen switches on your digital dash that are sent to your Max ECU to turn on all sorts of features and not burn more inputs on your ECU. The possibilities on this are very interesting and I want to explore them more in the future. I think I've used the Max ECU enough to tell you guys whether it's a good product or not and I must say that I'm completely sold. The particular model of Max ECU that I'm using is the Max ECU Race Premium Edition. Now this sells for about the same price as a Holly HP, has more inputs and outputs, and has built-in EGT inputs. If you guys have more questions, leave them down below in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them as best as I can. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.